So there were revelations late today surrounding Taryn Thomas as it was confirmed that police had laid charges over a, a midday search warrant at his house, harassment charges relating to a, a former girlfriend and a breach of a court order. He was bailed to appear in Broadmeadows Magistrates Court on November 21. It prompted the AFL to release a statement. I think one of the open questions has been what happens after the 18-match suspension is served to what has happened previously? And these are new charges and new allegations. So the AFL statement reads, please note that the AFL will specifically not permit Mr Thomas to join the list of any AFL club pending the hearing and determination of the charges that have now been brought against him and subject to the outcome of those proceedings. It went on to say more broadly, it is the AFL's intent that Mr Thomas will not be approved to play at any level of Australian football pending the hearing and determination of the charges that have now been brought against him and subject to the outcome of those proceedings. So what is quite clear is there is no place for Taron Thomas in football in the foreseeable future. And it looks increasingly likely the long-term future. I'm not here to hang anyone. But I'm getting a bit tired of media people saying, oh, yeah, some clubs are interested. Who? Name a club. Put a, if any clubs out there, put your hand up and say, yeah, yeah, we're interested in Taron Thomas. Because... I don't think that's going to happen. And I'm not the judge, jury, but this kid, he's either tremendously misunderstood and misguided or he's tremendously stupid. And I'm being... I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm not trying to put him down when I say that. There's two sides to everything. But right now, he's on the wrong side a lot, Jared. And you can extend your sympathies to some extent because we don't know the full story. But when they keep clocking up, the breaking of intervention orders and, and defying court orders, you think, what is going through this man's head? He, he may need help. That's what I'm saying. Well, fairly, yes, and North Melbourne obviously help. went to a lot of lengths to yeah. try to help him. That broke down. So separate to what's happening from a legal perspective, footy needs parameters, and today was our first glimpse at parameters. So he will need a clean slate long term to get any sort of consideration, I think, within AFL circles. Oh, I'd be very surprised if he came back. Taron Thomas, yep. uh, the former North Melbourne uh, midfielder at Macca. The AFL put out a very yep. strongly worded uh, statement uh, today following uh, the charges from the <coughs> Victoria Police about uh, alleged harassing uh, phone yeah, calls. Yeah, absolutely. Do, do, you think, do you think clubs have put a line through him or has the AFL effectively done this already? I think the AFL have put a line through him in a lot of ways. I think that is looking that the case at the moment. I think yep. the timeline's fascinating for this as well. We know that he's been charged, accused of making those harassing phone calls yep. to a former partner. He's going to appear at the Broadmeadows Magistrates Court on the 21st of November. So this is after yeah. uh, the trade period, so after the, the drug... Yeah, the timing of that is timing interesting. Because he's a delisted free agent, so any club could get him if they mm. had permission Correct. from the AFL. So the word it was a really strongly worded statement yep. and, and good on him for doing that in that sense. Like, cannot train at any level of Australian football without the approval of the AFL, including mm. once he's 18 match suspension ends. So yep. it's a big story, yeah. boys. So all these clubs out there, they want to win a flag, not at any cost. You know, I was always uneasy yeah. about him playing in any you know, AFL uh, role next year. Felt he had to play basically a, a state league role. So all these champions have changed. All these people have said, mm. you know, over the last couple of weeks as the AFL fraternity has gathered in circles to talk about domestic violence, they all right now should be saying we will not be taking this player next year or at any stage. The AFL can't do that because they can't pre prejudge these charges. But AFL clubs can do what David Matthews from GWS did and said, not us, we will not be taking mm. Taron Thomas. I think yeah. that would be a really strong symbolic stance. Yeah, yeah. and I think the AFL deserves to be commended for Definitely. the statement today. And the leadership uh, on the issue, he clearly has got some work to do. What about his future, uh, Ralph? He's out of contract at the end of the year. Where do you see him playing, if at all, next season? There's so many mixed messages. So his teammates think he's likely to retire. They feel yeah. like, not that he's checked out, but certainly that he's lost the passion. Just can't get yeah. up. And how would you at 1-9 as well? And so I think they also feel like he wouldn't go to a club like Gold Coast because you've got to learn 40 new names. <laughs> a bit like Gary Ablett Senior, you don't necessarily Know that Gary Ablett Senior didn't, didn't know anyone's you name. Know, he's just too shy. But there are people yeah. out there close to him who would say five or six clubs have expressed an interest. Now, not saying we're going to give you a two-year deal at a million bucks a year, but have expressed an interest. So, yeah. look, I just think of what happens when you have a coffee date up there at the Burley Pavilion with Damien Hardwick. So, we saw it with Dan Rioli. He's gone from a three-year contract to all of a sudden saying, to, to not even being able to say, I will stay at Richmond this week, promoting dream time at the G. So, funny things can happen and you can go from very, very unmotivated to just having the fire in the belly 
Premier League game when Dimmer just does special things with you. I reckon Sydney's the club to watch. If Luke Parker goes, I reckon, wonder if he's wearing the red and white quickly. Macca, do you yep. think he's a walk-up AFL legend, Dustin Martin? Four letters, lock. Absolute yep. lock for mine. He is a legend. That'll happen. It won't happen straight away. Yep. Australian Football Hall of Fame. They don't like to put people in straight away. But he's a legend. Let's look at. A, do you want to look at a couple of other names? So these are the players yep. who are current, or you know, modern, up. recent. Yep. Are yep. they all? They're Dusty's all a lock. Gary Ablett is an absolute lock. Yep. Buddy Franklin's a lock. Then it gets a little bit more confusing. But I'll say I think Scott Pendlebury. Of course he is. When he gets boomers. Of <laughs> yep. course he is. Yeah, that was a bit quick. There, I think. <laughs> a little quick. When he gets a games record, he's in. <laughs> Luke Hodge. Is he a lock? I think he is. I put, a lot. I put Chris Judd above him. Judd, he's got, well, I think, six uh, All-Australians, five best and fairest. Mm -hmm. So I understand the gravitas. I understand the Norm Smith medals. I understand the premiership captain. But, um, yeah, I, I just think Chris mm -hmm. Judd, you know, pound for pound, uh, he's achieved more in individual, yeah. Yeah, from an individual perspective. Gun, Hodgey, not big game player. Yep. The norms. The, I think that to me is a massive on the, on the big massive. stage. So, so Jody didn't struggle in grand finals. No, that's true. Well, he, did, yeah. he did win a Norm Smith in a losing, didn't he? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're splitting hairs. We're going to move on yep. to, uh, uh, we'll stay on Richmond, sorry, John. Yep. So they're second last on the ladder at the moment. Tanking is the dirtiest word in football. Do you think Richmond sinks to the bottom? I think there's a massive chance that they could sink to the bottom. So they have not got within 39 points of an opponent in the last six weeks. I mean, where does the next win come from? Whereas at least North Melbourne are having a bit of a crack at it. Benny Gale says we don't bottom out at Richmond. Now, I've spoken to Gary Bacanara, who's the man who, of course, orchestrated the Hawthorne, well, four, three Pete and, of course, the mm -hmm. four flag dynasty. What he say? says they absolutely must finish on the bottom because, of all the, because the bottom. of all the things that you get. Not just the number one pick, but then you get two picks within 20. You get the potentially first mid-season pick if North wins a game in a couple of weeks. You get the first pre-season pick. You might drag someone through there, even though that doesn't happen very often. And you get a rookie pick as well. So here's his line. The problem for sides who find themselves down the bottom with Tassie coming in is finishing bottom might give you a pick 10. So if you get a chance in the draft this year, you capitalise or you could be down for a very, very long time. I think it's every possibility. Here's where North can do it. Mm. and get above uh, Richmond. August 8, sorry, August 3, mm. it's Marvel Stadium. They play uh, each other. They play each other. And you look at it, Marvel Stadium's not the natural habitat of the Tigers. No, is it? it's They've lost, not. I think it's eight in a row at the venue and North have beaten them the last two. So no team's gone through a season undefeated, well, no team's gone through a season without winning a game yep. in 60 years. So, so we think the Tigers could tank here? But so, uh, uh, it's not tanking these days because the AFL's about to bring in yeah, a but it is. It is exactly what it is, isn't it? In. It's, manage, it's a management. Yeah. Yeah. But it's legalised tanking. Like, I've been more than anyone. You, you, don't, you don't get a vault and you don't go mm. out there and actually orchestrate a tank yeah. and you don't get any evidence of it. The vault. I like we saw what vault. happened with Geelong last year. So they arrested the likes mm. of Zach Tui. Um, Jeremy Cameron went in for early surgery, a couple of others. And even in their injury release, they said, we're preparing players for next year. So, Scott Pendlebury, you speak of him, he was a priority pick when Collingwood tanked. Um, Jack Darling, they won a premiership four years later they got Darling. So, you win a flag and then you set yourself up for the next era. The eighth wooden spoon would be a sweet reward for the Tigers. It's, it's hard to criticise Richmond now, but then pop North Melbourne for not doing it last year. So, <laughs> we're a bit conflicted there. Tar